Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host for today. And today our special guest is Jessie Buttons, who is the New Zealand Super Nanny. Jessie facilitates family meetings and coaches parents on how to respond to challenging behaviors, such as sibling rivalry, bedtimes and tantrums, to name just a few, in order to create harmony in the home. She has released a best-selling book, which is called The Nature of Children, which describes the four different natures of children that we're, well, four different natures that we're all born with, I should say, and the strategies that meet the needs of each nature, which I'm very interested to learn more about. So without further ado, welcome, Jesse. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. And yeah, I'm really honored to be here. Oh. And you guys today about the four different natures of children yeah as soon as as soon as i saw that came up on facebook i went what <laughs> what is this so to get started i think really the first question would be how you became the new zealand super nanny and how did you discover these four natures how did you get into figuring out that this was even a thing yeah, so I, I was originally trained as a teacher um, and before heading overseas, I trained as a teacher and then I started in London um, with a well-known agency and I nannied um, in lots of different countries basically and because I had the teacher training behind me, um, I was able to secure quite high profile nanny jobs, which meant that the children, um, you know, the parents were focused on, on careers and were busy working, therefore the children had many behaviour issues right. um, due to the fact that their parents were not around. And this need was substituted by basically everything money could buy. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I witnessed in, in different countries and um, different regions lots of different parenting strategies, lots of different behavior strategies, and lots of different ways that parents run their households. And a lot of them were, were brilliant. Some of them um, tended to make the behavior worse. So I kind of got a, a bit of a perspective from an outsider looking in to why kids behave badly um, when we see unwanted behavior, what is it, what is the cause, and what is it that these kids are actually wanting. And most of the time, as we know, it's, it's the need for attention and the need to feel significant and, and that they belong deep down underneath it all. So that, that's kind of how it all started. Um, before returning home to New Zealand, I worked for three years uh, at a Montessori preschool. And it was actually there where I really started to observe the different natures of children. And my skill set changed from managing children to having to manage uh, parents and teachers. And I actually read a book about personality types in order to, to become a better manager and a better director of this, of this preschool. And it fascinated me. It was, I just, I was able to pick every parent and every teacher and, and define who they were. And, and it just made so much sense. And I was able to, to manage them and communicate in the way that worked for both of us. Um, and it was kind of there where I started thinking, I wonder when we become this type. Do we grow into it? Do we, can we change? And, and after further research, I realized that we're actually born um, one of four different natures. Right. And some different personality profiles extend that to 16. But I've created it just for four, just to make it really easy. So those four are social, strong, sensitive, and structured. And um, so on, on one end of the spectrum, You've got a structured child who has a high need for structure and time alone and, um, and facts about their day. And on the other end of the spectrum, a social, a social child gets quite bored with that structure and needs a bit more variety and socialisation 
and friends and things like that. So depending on the child's nature, it depends on, on what they need. Does that make sense so far? It does. It does. I have a little bit of insight after watching something that you did. And I think I picked myself out as the sensitive type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you be able to break them down a little bit more? There was, there was a lot of good yep. information you put in that video that I saw. And yeah, it made me sure, think, yeah. wow, so, I can think of a few people. Yeah, exactly. So the, there's two high moving extroverted natures. So we're all familiar with the difference between extroversion and introversion. The two extroverted natures are social and strong. So you will see in their expression, in their movement, they, they're very loud and fast and, and they're very out there, very confident. Um, and then the introverted, the two introverted natures is sensitive and structured. So they differ in, in a sense. So back to the social and strong, the socials movement, theirs is like an upward bouncy, buoyant, they're cheeky, they're mischievous, they just love people, they love fun. Um, if you say the word fun or surprise or hey, I've got something to show you, they're just like all over it. Yeah. They are motivated by fun and, um, and they're also quite, quite laid back, quite easygoing. Whereas the, so, the strong nature, they are also quite high movement and quite intense and very extroverted, but their movement is forward. There's a, there's a dynamic about it, there's a push to it. They're on a mission. Um, if you say no, they say, really, let me see if I can. I'm going to anyway, get out of my way. <laughs> and, if, and if you try and stop them, they're gonna explode. They've just got this determined um, ambience about them. And if you're a parent at home listening and you have a strong natured child, you will be smiling or crying because you're like, yep, that is my child. <laughs> uh, the majority of the families I work with have got a strong natured child because they are, they're quite hard to manage because yeah. they're motivated by control. They like to control people. They love challenges. So you put those two things in the mix in a family and you've got a child that is, is, is really hard to manage, but mm -hmm. there is hope. There are lots of strategies that you can use in order to, to give the strong natured child what they need um, in order to feel balanced and feel good about themselves. One example of what they might need is, is to be challenged. So if you've got a strong nature that's not challenged at school, they will come home and they will challenge you or their siblings. So that's an example there. So then the two um, lower movement introverted natures is sensitive and structured. So the sensitive nature is, is all things sensitive. They're very, uh, their movement is, is kind of downward and flowy. They're quite graceful. They're generally really cooperative. They're the peacemakers. They just want to do what's right. They're kind of the teacher's pets. They like to do the right thing. They create peace in the family. Um, these are the kids that will tell the other siblings, come on, quick, dad's coming, you know, we have to do our jobs or whatever. They just like to make sure that nobody's getting in trouble. They don't like conflict. They're very sensitive to other people's feelings. Um, they take on other people's feelings. These are the kids that they don't really need harsh discipline. You kind of look, look at them in a way and they're kind of like, you know, they're very easily crushed. Uh, they cry easily. They tend to have very sensitive skin. They don't like itchy tags or anything like that. Just overall sensitive. Hmm. They're also very um, intuitive. So they can tell if something's wrong. They can kind of they have a very good sense of, of other people's modes and, um, and feelings. So that's the sensitive. Mm -hmm. The structured, these are our serious guys. They are very literal, very serious, very poker face. They don't have much movement at all. They're very still. They like to just observe, stand back. You know, if you take the kids to the park, they're the ones that are just standing back. They're just gonna have a little bit of a look first before they go and play. Um, they, they're very factual and they're very intellectual. So they, these are the kids that are asking why, how, how does that work and why do we have to do that? They wanna know all the information and they're continuously 
um, workshopping, all these details that they've gathered. These are the perfectionists. These are the ones that have to have things just so, just right. Um, but in saying that, they are very all or nothing. There's no gray areas. So they're either meticulously um, messy or they are very, uh, sorry, meticulously tidy or they're very messy. They're all or nothing. So if you're thinking, well, that sounds like my child, but they're really messy, um, then, then that's fine. They can be really messy as well. But generally, they, they like things to be, to be just so. So, so the book is about these four different natures mm -hmm. and it goes through each of the highest needs for those natures. So do you want me to give you a bit of an example of uh, the needs? Yeah, each? yes, please. That would be handy. I've, I'm sure a lot of listeners at home are already putting people in boxes and going, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... There's, we, we all lead with one dominant nature followed by, by a secondary. So parents at home listening might be thinking, oh, it kind of sounds like both of those two. Um, so when you're not sure which one they lead with, you, you look at their movement. And I can also tell by facial expressions. So facial expressions, are a social nature, their facial expressions move upwards. Yeah. They've got this this um, the smile that moves upwards, their, light, their face lights up, they've got apple cheeks and button noses and cherub hands and freckles, high foreheads, they've just got this real cuteness about them. Mm -hmm. Since our strongs have a very determined look about them and they've got lots of angles in their face. Sensitives have downward flowing blended features, so they might have a hooded eye. They just have kind of like a sensitive look about them. Whereas structures have very aligned, like a square face. Um, they might have two lines, parallel lines that come down their nose, flat nose bridge. Um, when they smile, you might see a line that goes straight across. So that's facial features, but also expressions. Have a look at their expressions. Are they upward and bouncy and buoyant? Are they strong and determined? Are they reactive? Um, or are they sensitive, downward flowing? Or are they... Um, still and serious. So sometimes children will behave in a way that they think they need to in order to be valued. So if you've got a if you've got a structured parent, the child may then think I need to be structured to be valued by my parent. So their behavior might look structured but really they might be a sensitive or a social or whatever. Mm. So that's where um, children and parents can get into trouble when they are seeing a lot of misbehavior it may be due to the child not feeling safe to be themselves and we can go into that um, a little bit later yeah so the four different um so the four needs for each nature the social they need fun and novelty they need high movement so they are the highest mover of all natures they need variety they need happiness, happy parents, and they need social interactions. The strong nature, they need physical movement, so they're also quite high in movement, but their movement is physical and forward. Like so they need to be moving types. forward. Yeah. Really kind of like those sports challenges, like challenge them on the monkey bars, get them to push mm. something, get them to run a race. They like that sort of physical movement. Um, challenges, as I said, they like to be challenged. They love a challenge. If you say, I'll race you to the car, they're, they're already there. They just <laughs> can't help themselves. And they're quite often um, the, the sibling that is causing the trouble because they just like to get a reaction. They love action and results. Button, button pushes. Like, if I just poke this person, I just can't help myself. So in, my, in, in the programs that I do with parents, we look at all sorts of different ways to give, give that child these challenges at home so that they don't need to get that need in a negative way. Mm. So they also need control and power. And this is a really hard one for parents. Um, they, the difference between structured and, and strong, they're both quite powerful natures and it's to do with control 
the strong likes to control other people. They like mm -hmm. to lead and be the leader. Whereas the structured, they need to control themselves. They want to feel in control of themselves and they want to feel that parents allow them to have that authority over themselves in a respectful way. So there's a bit of a difference there, but it's an, an important um, difference to note. Mm. So that's the strong. The sensitive, they need a lot of reassurance. Um, they, they do suffer from anxious feelings a lot out of all the four natures. They worry a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they need to know what's happening in their day. These are the kids that are always asking, when are, where are we going? What, what day is library day? When is grandma coming? What's for dinner? Always asking questions. They, they're wanting information about their, their world. So they need a, a lot of reassurance and, and that's one way you can give it to them. Um, so I give my families an A2 um, weekly visual schedule and it is particularly for the sensitive child, but it's, it's, I, I recommend it for all children so that you can give them the details about their day and about their week. And parents report back that their kids are standing in front of these visual, visual schedules every day looking at where we're going and who's coming and what's for dinner and, and that sort of thing. So reassurance is, is a big one for the sensitive. Comfort. They like to feel comfortable at all times. These are the snuggly kids. They, they like lots of touch and lots of comfort. They like to stay in bed a little bit longer. They like to jump into their parents' bed. They like to have their dolls and their blankies and, and that sort of thing. And they also love to comfort other people. So these are the kids that are going to be your nurses and your vets and the ones that go and save a little birdie. And they like to make sure everybody's, everybody's comfortable. So another high need for the sensitive child is a peaceful home. Being the peacemaker, they really can't cope with a lot of conflict. Um, and just like I mentioned with the social, again, the social needs lightness and if there's any conflict, that's really heavy for them. So social and sensitive, if there's conflict in the home and you've got a social or a sensitive, you will notice behaviors that you're thinking, why are they doing that? It is because this conflict is affecting them. So there's different strategies in the book around what to do if there is conflict, because there is. You've got two parents and they are more often than not opposites, because opposites attract. So there's gonna be conflict, um, but there's ways that you can lighten it. You know, you can say, oh, silly old dad, if he doesn't, if he doesn't pick up his clothes, I'm gonna put them in the rubbish bin, you know, after you've yeah. had an argument about, dad being lazy or whatever the argument is about you can just lighten it up a bit yeah um and that sends the child a message that everything's okay you know we can we can make things better again the other thing that sensitive kids need is meaningful interactions these these kids are really deep and meaningful they hold on to all their birthday cards and all their photos and any artwork from school that you know, if you dare throw anything out, like everything is sentimental to them. Is this you? It's like looking into my life. <laughs> What's that? It's like you've got a camera into my house. <laughs> yeah. So meaningful interactions is, is really important to them. And, and this can be done, um, you know, different times throughout the day. Anything kind of face-to-face. Um, which is which is really good for all children, obviously, for parents just to be aware of of how many meaningful interactions and connections they are getting in each day with their kids. Um, and it seems that this area it is lacking lately with with just how how home life is and and the internet and all the things that parents focus on. You know, they focus on their phone, they're focusing on the cookbook, the hot stove, they're focusing on driving, they're focusing on the road, they're focusing on all these things. And the kids are there, but the kids aren't getting this face-to-face -face interaction mm. and connection. So although that's important for all children, the sensitive kids really need it. And then the structured child, they, as I mentioned, need to be in control of themselves. So no matter how young your structured child is, give them, the cho give them choices, let them make decisions for themselves, give them the authority over themselves. So this looks like um, 
going to them and saying, right, bedtime is 7.30, lights out by 8, and it's a, I, I, I leave it up to you. So I trust you, you're in charge, I'm not going to micromanage you. This makes them feel really respected, and respect is the next high need. And, and some parents struggle with this. Why should I respect this little person when they haven't shown me respect? But the structured child likes to feel, these are the old souls. They like to feel like they're a grown up, even though they're only four. So if you respect them and you talk to them like they're five years older than they are, they will respond amazingly. They are so capable, they're very independent, they're very responsible. They can take on a lot more, a lot sooner than the other natures. They're very wise, and very practical, um, but they, they get upset when they feel like they're not in control of themselves, when they're being micromanaged. So another need for them is obviously structure within their day. Yeah. Order, routine, and repetition. They like to do the same thing every day in the same order. They like to eat the same thing. They like to wear the same clothes. They just like everything to be predictable and the same. So if you've got a, a social or a strong parent who's out, out there and busy and all of a sudden the plans change and oh, we're going to go here now and then we need to go to the supermarket, you'll see some behaviours from your structured child and that's them going, hang on a minute, change the plan on me. You haven't told me, I need, I need a little bit of time to get my head around this, what does this all mean? And, and they'll dig their heels in, hold their arms and say, it's not happening, I'm not going. Yeah. So there's little um, techniques in the book of how to ensure that you can still run a household and not upset yeah. your structured child. And um, another thing they need is facts. They like to know why, they like the facts, they like to be spoken to actually and, and directly. Um, a, a good example, recently I had a family with a structured child who was just refusing to brush his teeth. And I said to the mother, give him the facts around why we brush our teeth. That's all he needs. Give him the facts and leave it up to him. Give him the authority. Give him the response. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've just frozen. Oh, there you are. And I said, the facts can look like if you Google kids with rotten teeth, if you Google kids with rotten teeth and pull up a photo. Now, this is probably the only time that you should ever use scare tactics with kids, but it works. <laughs> Here's a photo of a kid with rotten teeth. Here's the facts. And, and this is how our teeth work and our gums work. And when we eat, food gets stuck in our gums. And if we don't brush that food out, then our gums won't be able to be a healthy home for our teeth and our teeth will get rotten. That's why we brush our teeth. So it's important when you brush your teeth to be brushing your gums and not just, you know, the yes. tips of the whites and, and, and you give them the facts and then you leave it up to them. And then you will, you will realize that they will, they want to do what's right. And so they will take on that responsibility. Same with when you're trying to get um, a structured child out of nappies is to give them the facts about, you know, children who are three, they wear underpants. And if you have a look at that child, you know, they are now wearing underpants. And this, is, this is what happens. And, you know, just give them the facts about life and they will generally toilet train themselves. Ooh. Give them the, the facts. Um, the other thing that structured need is um, time at home. So they are the introverts that get very overwhelmed by too much social interaction. So families need to be careful with um, their schedules and, and over-scheduling structured kids and ensuring that they have time alone off devices um, to, to think, just to be alone with their thoughts. Mm. Um, that's really important. So the book goes into, into more detail into different areas of of home life, including bedtimes, meal times, um, morning routines, different activities and, and experiences that each nature loves and that will, will nurture their strengths. Um, and then it goes into different ways to discipline, which is yeah. obviously my specialty. Yeah, because I was just thinking about that. You could start off with one child and think, oh, yeah, I've got this down. And then you have another child who's complete opposite. 
and all of a sudden you're lost, especially if the first child is like you. Exactly. You have a, you have a child, you think, oh, this, this parenting thing is easy, this is great, and then you think, let's have another one, and they are completely different. And all the techniques that you were using on the first child do not work on the second child, um, and, and you're at a loss for, for what to do. Mm. And I guess understanding these different natures of the children, I'm guessing it sounds like it almost empowers them to, to take ownership of themselves, to understand their own mind, their own nature, and that would eventually build resilient adults. Absolutely. So it is definitely, it's the foundation of, of home life. We, we want our kids to go out into the world with a really secure understanding of who they are mm. and, and, and why that's valuable. So parents kind of, they, they try and, some of them, try and mould their kids into what they think they want them to be. Instead of stepping back and saying, show me who you are, let's show the world what you've got to offer. And so it really is the foundation to, to self-esteem, to, to you know, being able to stand up to bullies, to not being a bully, mm. to um, being, knowing what they want to do with their life, to knowing what they're good at. Yeah. Um, and, and really not, not having to compare themselves to other people, which, which is a huge problem in, in today's, you know, in the preteens and teenagers with, with all these, with all the digital devices, um, they're constantly seeing how amazing everyone else is. And parents get into the trap of, of praising kids for their efforts, mm. um, which, which is what we spoke about mm. briefly before. Mm. And what that does is it teaches the child that I must perform in order to have value. Yeah. I must meet this expectation in order to be loved and, and to be worthwhile. And so it really sets them up for failure. You know, what if, what, if, what if this star player that you're saying, oh, you're my star soccer player, you're awesome, you're great, you're a good boy, what if he's, what if he's having a bit of an off day and he's not the star player? Yeah. You know, what's that going to do to his self-esteem? But if you say you're a great teammate, you pass the ball, you really get in there, you try your best, you're really acknowledging the effort mm. um, instead of the child himself as a whole. So when yeah. you realize what nature your child is, it's really easy to point out different aspects of who they are when you see them happening. And mm -hmm. um, one of the modules I, I do with parents is a self-esteem module. And I get the parents to use five words to boost their child's self-esteem. And those five words are, I love that about you. Ah. And I ask the parents, I give them a few examples of what to look for. And I ask them when they see these things to say to the child, I love that about you. And this was something that my mum actually said to me as an adult. We were going somewhere in the car and I was in the back seat. And, and I'm a social, so I'm naturally, I love making people laugh. And I love cracking funny jokes. And I said something funny. And she said, Jess, you're so funny. I love that about you. And I was like, oh, I am quite funny. And even as an adult, yeah. I was like, that, that is actually who I am. And I don't even have to try. That's just who I am. So if you look for these um, qualities in, in each of the different natures, you know, if you've got a strong nature and, and, and they're determined and pushy and you, and you think, oh, man, you're just in my face all the time and you've got all these negative ideas about who they are. If you flip that and you say, you're so passionate, you know, you really love to get stuck in and get the job done. I love that about you. Mm. And it really flips your view of your child, which in turn will support their view of themselves. Yeah. And they'll start steering more towards those things, those qualities more than the, I suppose the outcome of something. Exactly. And if they get called the class clown, then they can go, yeah, I am. That's actually who I am. It's not yeah. going to affect them. Yeah. Bullies and labels and everything like that, you know, it's not going to matter. 
And, and I have to wonder about our country's suicide rate. Mm. Why are people, why, why do they feel like they, they have no value here? Yeah, that could be a whole topic in itself. I think I'm going to have to get a panel for that one. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many people who I could bring in. And I know from personal experience at, in my schooling, trying to fit in as, I suppose, an immigrant, because I came from the UK, and having people going, oh, you sound funny, oh, you do this, and not really having the tools to cope with it, it was very difficult. So teaching, mm. teaching them resilience and to own their own nature is a great step. And that's the best way to help children with their, with their challenges and their weaknesses mm. is to actually build on their strengths and, and build up their confidence that way and then, and then start to work on their weaknesses instead of always pointing out you could do better there or you could, you know, you need to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what ages do you, when do you tend to get called in? Do you work with families when they go, ah, help, or can you do workshops with them before they have trouble or new parents or older it's parents? Definitely, people generally find me when, when they're in the thick of it yeah. and they find themselves yelling, repeating themselves, they're here in back chat. Um, there's a lot of sibling rivalry. There's just a bit of a sense of everything's a little bit out of control. Yeah. And so um, I've got a couple of different programs. So one of my program would be for that parent who's in that mode. Then there's other parents that they've got everything kind of organized and, and they've got the discipline thing down packed, but they want to really be proactive in setting their kids up for success. A lot of parents think, oh, we'll just see how we go and, and we'll hope for the best. Well, hope is not a plan. And some parents want to know what can we do that's better? How can we build on what we've got so that we can give our, our children the best start? And then there's also parents who have maybe have older children who have kind of lost that relationship. They may not be talking anymore. And so I work with those parents on, on how to really reconnect and how to really see the value in their child and gain their child's respect back and that sort of thing. So I get a lot of parents with kids who are in the toddler age and yeah. in the teenage age. And then a lot of families who you know, have two families that have come together. So you've got yeah. multiple personalities. You've got multiple kids who want to be the leader and have control. And um, it's about setting up a system where everybody's getting their needs met. Yeah. And is that something that you do in the home? Do you come and see them or do you if do I, online? I can, logistically, um, I have spent in the past a lot of time going into homes. Mm -hmm. I can still work with parents online and I'm doing a lot more online now um, just because I can get around more families. Um, so yeah, I definitely like to go into the home and, and look at the organisation of things and set up systems. Part of my program is home organisation and, and charts and rosters and, and schedules and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that I kind of look at is how is everything organised and, and as you mentioned, I, I facilitate family meetings or I coach parents to facilitate the family meeting, which is actually better. Um, yeah. Because that's where it all starts, is actually coming together as a family getting the kids involved. Here's the expectations. This is what we expect. Here's our family values. This is what we value in a family. Mm. You know, we value education. This is why we're on it, you to do your homework, because this is what we value. Um, so it makes the kids go, oh, okay, this is my family and this is, I belong here. And, and I've got an opportunity to, to talk about a fun family event that I want to do. And it really gets the kids buy-in. And you yeah. find that they love it. They just, they get excited. They, you know, you get the structured or the sensitive child. I give them the clipboard and I say, you're in charge of the, of the minutes and then we're going to have an agenda. And it kind of, it's this level of security and safety that everything is going to be organised and okay. And, and parents have an opportunity to apologise and, and to say, you know, we're going to stop yelling and we're going to learn to, you know, we're going to start having some more family time together. 
And so that's where it all starts, is with this family meeting. And, and then from there we go into, um, you know, the structure of how the household runs and, and solving problems. Um, I coach parents on how to respond to different behaviours. Um, I give them the scripts of what they actually need to say and um, different ways for parents to look after themselves because obviously self-care is important. Because yeah. parents um, are winging it as well, aren't they? They, they do what they know from their parents or grandparents or extended family everyone's just winging it so having that exactly. those talks yeah well people here, parents are doing what what they had done to them generally yeah and as the saying goes it, you know i that's what happened to me and i turned out all right um and so they're a little bit confused as to why it's not working with their kids mm. they're like i would have never spoken to my parents like that ever would have never yeah. gone away with that you know, why, why are kids so rude today? And why are they, you know, so we go through the, the, the history of parenting and, and society and I teach parents the difference. Now, there is a huge difference to society now compared to what it was back then. And mm. this is the reason why, you know, it's democracy, basically. Um, parent, you know, dad used to go out to work and mum used to, you know, t- have dinner on the table by six. You never, you would never talk back and dad was the, you know, the, the controller of the family and, and the mother did what she was told. Now you've got two parents, you've got mum having a career and you've got it 50-50, you're parenting 50-50. So there's going to be um, disagreements and arguments um, and even in, in the workplace, you don't see a boss firing a staff member straight away. There's, there's a lot of um, opinions matter and I'm allowed to have my opinion and humans right and all that sort of thing. So at schools and hospitals and workplaces, kids are getting the sense that they have a say. And if they don't like something, they can actually yeah. bring it up and, and, and actually stand up for themselves and say, no, I don't actually like that. The problem is, is that they're not mature enough to do that in a diplomatic way. Yeah. And they're not mature enough to know how to um, present facts and collaborate and problem solve. So parenting needs to be, instead of the hierarchy, do as you're told, it needs to be more collaborative. Yeah. It needs to encourage cooperation and problem solving because that's how the world is working. So, yeah, things have changed. They really have. So how would people go about booking an appointment with you? Is that through your website or Facebook or how would they Absolutely. get in touch with you? If they go to... They can find me, the New Zealand Super Nanny, um, on Facebook or Jesse Buttons. They can go to harmonyinthehome.co.nz. That's my website. Mm-hmm. Um, your listeners can book in a, a free consultation where we go over like the hardest part of the day is normally what I start with. Um, yeah. And so I normally, you know, take parents' problems and where they're at and I will come up with a bit of a plan. If I can help them, I might send them some resources or that sort of thing. So it all starts with just getting in touch and, um, and jumping on a call with me and we can explore different avenues. Brilliant. That's really helpful. Thank you for that. That's really, really kind of you. Um, is that where you can, um, our listeners can get your book as well? Is that through the your book. website? Yes. Yep, you can get the book. It's available um, on Amazon if you look up The Nature of Children. Uh, it's cheaper f- for you, your listeners, to buy one directly off me. It's a little bit expensive getting it in from Amazon from the US. Yep. So I brought a whole lot in, um, in bulk. So mm-hmm. you can just send me an email and I will send you the details and post one out to you. Perfect. I might put that in the show notes if that's all right. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Well, we're coming to the end now. Just before we finish off, is there anything that um, we've missed? Anything that I was meant to mention and completely forgot? Um, anything you wanted to add? I don't think so, no. Um, if your listeners have any questions or they are struggling to decode what nature their child is, I'm available to help them. They can send me some photos or give me a call and talk through their kids if they, wanna, if they want some help. Yeah, I'm just, I'm here and available. Um, yeah, we can look at maybe some different topics for some future um, podcasts. Yes, we certainly will. Oh my gosh, we've just scratched the surface. Um, so <laughs> I have one final question. What would you 
like the people listening to the podcast, what's the one major takeaway that if, if everything's gone over their head, what is the one thing you'd like them to take away from this interview? I'd like them to look at behavior as, as communication, regardless of what nature their child is, regardless of how many times you've told them, the behavior you're seeing is a message. And the word itself, acting out, is, is, yeah. is precisely that. They are acting out like a game of charades. They don't have the words to tell you how they're feeling. They don't even know what it is they need, so they're acting it out. So if you can start to view behaviour with a different perspective, you will start to get all these insights into what it is they need. And it'll be something along the lines of, I want you to see me, I want to feel heard, I want to feel significant, and I want to feel powerful. And that's generally the root of all behavior. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking back to, I was talking to a lady last week for another podcast about newborns and crying babies and they didn't have the words and it's, they're eventually learning the words, but they've still got to mm. communicate physically yeah, and, exactly. and without words. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And if you're seeing behaviours that you don't want to see, more often than not, it is your response to those behaviours that will determine whether you see them again. So it's really yeah. important to think about how, how to respond. Mm. Perfect. Well, that brings us to the end. Thank you very, very much for joining me. And, yeah, I will definitely... After this, if we've got time, I'll just make a couple of notes for some yeah, other topics. Absolutely. But that is it. Jesse, thank you for joining me on the Women's Wellness Podcast. No problem. Thanks for having me.